NATO. N A T O. What those what do those letters stand for you ask? It's North Atlantic Terrorist Organization. They strike again and you will never guess where they have found their next foothold. That is right. The small nation of Montenegro, the country on the Adriatic coast with some 6000 inhabitants and also a country once bombed by NATO in an attack that w did not go through the United Nations Security Council, a country that suffered from NATO's terrorist uh, attacks and war crimes. Montenegro marked an important step on its road towards NATO membership on Monday, 15 February 2016. Well, congratulations, Milo Djukanovic. You have brought your country into the terrorist organization that once attacked it. Now, look here. As a Slovenian, I feel compelled to apologize in the name of my country for inviting and lobbying for Montenegro in the, the terrorist alliance. I am sorry. And I urge the Montenegrin people not to do this. NATO simply wants to get another foothold on Russia's footsteps. Because, well, we all know that we are in the midst of a second Cold War. And this plays right into the terrorist organization's hands. The, uh, the talks cover uh, the details of membership, including political, military and legal questions, and provide an opportunity for both sides to clarify outstanding issues. Well, one of the outstanding issues might be the fact that Montenegro was bombed by NATO and Na that NATO killed s innocent civilians just because they wanted to. And now the Prime Minister of Montenegro just wants them to be a part, but ask him why. Because I strongly suspect that they simply, how do we say this, um, facilitated this deal by giving him some money. The Prime Minister, Mr. Djukanovic of Montenegro, seen as second one from the left next to the Montenegrin flag, and the NATO scum on the two people on the right. Following the talks, the next step will be for the Allies to sign an accession protocol after which Montenegro will be begin attending NATO meetings as an invitee. Once all allies ratify the prot protocol, Montenegro will be able to accede to Washington Treaty and become the 29th member of the alliance. And all this is being done without anyone asking the Montenegrin people what they want. The Prime Minister, currently in power, has been in power since, well, let's just put it since begin, the beginning of time, and is basically setting himself up for a dictatorship. NATO, is this really what you have become from your so-called goals? Now, we all know that you're a terrorist organization, but will you support um, dictators? Yes, of course you will, because you like dictators. Because the United States even likes setting up new dictators. And, uh, and a foothold, even if so small, against Russia is always a win in NATO's mind. They want a new port on the Mediterranean. They want to deny Serbia a port or an easy access to the Adriatic. Uh, and therefore, they will be co-opting co Montenegro for their purpose. Let's read on. The talks are being carried by Ambassador uh, Trasuvoyo Teri Stampunov, NATO something, NATO's Assistant Secretary General for Political Affairs and Security Policy. 
the Montenegro's de delegation is led by Ambassador Dragan Radulovic, head of the Montenegro's mission to NATO. For fuck's sake, Montenegro, you have an entire mission to NATO? Seriously, a waste of your time and r precious resources. Opening the talks, Ambassador Stampuro said, The holding of the accession talks today is a mark of the progress made by Montenegro since regaining its independence. Uh, NATO membership will reinforce Montenegro's security and sovereignty. Okay. We'll deal with the word regaining in a second. But increasing a country's Security and sovereignty is not something NATO does. If NATO gets involved in a squabble on the Russian border, all of the member countries are automatically involved with, say, Russia. Sovereignty? Really? You have to uh, give up your airspace to NATO. You have to let them, let them land on your airstrips. Your army is a part of the NATO army. If NATO is at war, you are at war. Is this really increased sovereignty, I ask you? Now let's deal with this regaining of independence. Montenegro, yes, was already a country in the 19th century, even while many other Balkan states were under the Turkish influence or even in the Turkish Empire, Montenegro was already a sovereign nation. But to say that they regained it, their independence in the 2000s is simply stupid, my dear. Montenegro was only lost its independence when it was uh, put into the uh, unity of the Karadjordjevic dynasty and their country. Uh, first the uh, Kingdom of Serbia, then the Kingdom of uh, Serbs, Croats, Slovenes, and the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. During World War II, there you were, um, the, a puppet regime was set up in Montenegro by the Italians, uh, and after World War II, as we all know, the nations of Yugoslavia were free, and chose to be a part of the federative, Socialist Federative Republic of Yugoslavia. Now, all the nations were independent. They were simply members of the Federation. Montenegro, as we all know, did not exit Yugoslavia as many uh, nations did in the 90s, but they uh, remained in a union with Serbia long into the early 2000s. Now, just, they were independent. They used foreign currency, uh, which was first the Deutsche Mark and then the Euro. Uh, they had an, their own government. And I'm, I don't feel like going over all this, but still, Montenegro did not regain its independence. It was already independent. Let us read on. Since 2009, NATO and Montenegro have worked closely together for the Membership Action Plan, which helps na nations prepare for possible future membership. In December 2015, NATO foreign ministers invited Montenegro to start a session talks. Uh, Secretary General James Strongen welcomed the invitation as historic, saying it makes clear that NATO keeps its door open to complete our vision of Europe whole, free and at peace. Now, NATO certainly is not a, an alliance for peace. They start wars, they get involved in wars, they start new terrorist organizations because they are bored and they need new wars. They are a warmongering, uh, bloodthirsty organization. Basically, you could simply compare them to ISIS. It is an international organization that keeps attacking people for no good reason. I will leave you with this wonderful depiction of NATO. Write in the comments if you can guess uh, who the little girl being stabbed by NATO represents. Thank you for watching.